Hi, Cindy. Hi, how are you? It's so nice to meet you. Thank I feel you. like I'm staring into the sun. <laughs> Do you get that a lot? Um, no, that's the first time, actually. Really? I have to say, staring wow. into the sun is the first time, yes. I have so many questions for you. Okay. So you're 51, you have essentially weathered a hundred careers at this point, or it feels like. You went from supermodel to actress to businesswoman, and now you have an incredible beauty line with Dr. Savag. Mm -hmm. How do you keep yourself from burning out? I think it's every modern person's challenge, right? I mean, life is busy, modern life is busy. I kind of know my limits. Like, I know, okay, this- That seems important. And I, I'll like, at the beginning of the week, I'll review my, I'll look ahead, like, what's my week look like? Mm -hmm. Where could there be a potential problem? Where am I going to be burned out and like, okay, now I need the next night to come home and put on sweatpants and like, you know, binge watch uh, Netflix. So I, I'm, I'm good about organizing my time in that way. Are you active on social media? I, I am. Um, it's not second nature to me. It's like mm -hmm. something that I kind of had to learn and also learn who I wanted to be. So Instagram was the first one that resonated with me because I was like, oh, I get it. It's pictures. I've been mm -hmm. doing pictures for you know, over 30 and years. And fun to look at. And, yeah. yeah, and so Instagram was the first one that I was like, okay, I get this and, and this is fun. And then how much do I want to reveal? Um, you know, I don't come from a generation where it's like everything is for public consumption. But at the same time, what's interesting about Instagram is that it isn't those carefully edited, perfect pictures that we all see in magazines. So mm -hmm. it's kind of finding that balance of, um, you know, do I want to show my kids? I mean, now my kids are, you know, forget it. Like, and now they're public yeah. people as well. But when they were little, like, how much did I want to expose them? And It's so funny that you say it's not carefully edited because one of the larger criticisms of, I, I suppose, my generation, and I'm like an upper millennial, is that we are creating these lifestyles to show off that don't exist in real life. And then probably... Kaya's generation, which like really pioneered the Finsta, which uh -huh, is a yeah. fake Instagram. Yes, I know she has one. Yeah. So, so those are cool. She won't let me follow her on Finsta. But My real Instagram is a Finsta. <laughs> the thing that I love about social media is that it's your chance to be your own PR person. You you have a direct relationship with your audience, which I never had as a young model. I had to wait for people to write about me, and write about who they thought I was, as opposed to okay, that's your opinion, but here's how I want you to see me. Which yes. again, I'm not saying is 100% the truth. We all usually try to put our best face forward, but I have a voice in how I want to be seen. And then other people are going to say what they want to say anyway, but at least I have a voice too. Right, that's a really good point. You are controlling the brand messaging in a much more granular way now. Yeah, direct way. And it also doesn't have to be so serious. It doesn't have to be so like you know, like brand messaging. It's just right. like, it can just, yeah, it's more authentic, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, so now that you're kind of on the model circuit again, because you're here with your daughter and your son, how do you feel like modeling has changed in New York? And do you get very nostalgic? Like when you're here in September, does it um, feel, does it feel like the old days? Back in the day, like we didn't have stylists that got us ready to walk into a show. Like right. now what you wear to and from the shows is so as important true. to your, to who you are as a model. Mm -hmm. That's a, And that's a whole nother level of pressure, I think. Like, you know, I just like whatever I could roll up and put on the floor because, you know, normally you get to the show, they put you put they put they you in a robe and your clothes ends up in a little wad underneath your rack. So doing a show is doing a show. Yeah. You put on the clothes they tell you to, you walk down the runway when they, when they say go. Um, so for that, for my kids, it's the same, but I think um, some of the other stuff surrounding it is different. The generation right before me, there was showgirls mm -hmm. and there was print girls, and they were not the same. Like my generation is really one of the first generations where the print girls started doing because, shows. Well, that's probably and I think that's how what supermodel was it, born. It is because it kind of it was like we were doing both. So mm -hmm. like people would see us on the runway, and then they would see us in the editorials, and they would see us in the print campaign. Um, so that became the new normal. One of my favorite documentaries is Unzipped, that yeah. Isaac Mizrahi mm -hmm. Oh my God. And I look at that and I just think, and maybe this is because I'm romanticizing a time that yeah. I wasn't really part of, but I just think that was fashion. That was it. I, I think it was a great time. I feel very lucky that kind of my heyday as a model was during that time where, you know, it, it was exciting. But I think it's, 
I think this new generation, I mean, I think it's exciting now too. It's just different, you know? Yes. When did you know you wanted to be a model? I wanted to be a teacher when I was like in elementary school. And both my sisters teach? are teachers. I don't, I probably would have taught science or math. Then in seventh grade, I wanted to be the first woman president. And then what did I want to do? Oh, I think I had like, I was like a nuclear physicist. Cause I was like, that's like a, the most interesting job I can think of. And then I kind of just through chances, I met someone, I started modeling and it was like a good way to make money. I was mm -hmm. working, I had worked in cornfields my, since eighth grade. Like that's what you do in Illinois in the summer yeah. when you're a kid, you work in the cornfields and you know, I was making minimum wage and it's hard work. It's hot work, 10 hour, 12 hour days. And my first modeling job, it was like $75 an hour. And I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah. All I have to do is put on this cross your heart bra and stand there for an hour. I'm doing right. this. Have you ever been insecure about your mole? Oh, for sure. When I was a kid, um, well, first of all, my sisters called it an ugly mark because they said it's only a beauty mark if it's on this side. If it's on the left side, it's an ugly how, mark. How ideal I, for them. I know, sisters. <laughs> and then I remember like the first day of high school walking in and there was a kid, a guy, like a senior guy that my sister was friends with and he was like hey little Crawford you got chocolate on your face or something like that and I was like more to because it was like all the senior guys sitting on like the main steps and I was like slinking along the side like just trying to be invisible um and I never walked those stairs like the rest of the year I would like always go to the back stairway and and I asked my mom I was like I want to have my my mole removed and she was like she was so smart she was like okay She's like, but you know, you might have a scar and you don't know what that will look like. You know what your mole will look like, but if ever you want to go, you make the decision. So it was kind of good because then it was like, oh shoot, now it's my, it's, it's up to me. She didn't say no. Can we talk about meaningful beauty a little yeah, bit? Yeah, absolutely. I would so, love to. Yeah. How long has the line been around? We launched in, I guess, 2005. So we've been around over 10 years. What are your favorite products from the line? Or the ones that you use every day? So we have a new, the Meaningful Beauty 6, it's, um, Meaningful Beauty Beyond is coming out this fall. And so I've been using that for like the last, well, as we've been developing, which is the last nine months. And we have a new serum that I'm obsessed with, which has the stem cells, the melon leaf stem cells in it. And then we also have a night cream that has retinol in it now. And then we have a new scrub that's, you know, I love scrubs. So serum moisturizer. During the day, yeah, that's my normal morning. And then at night I do the serum again and then the night cream. And then I'll do the scrub like two or three times a week. Do you feel like you've um, come into yourself more and more as you've grown? Oh, for sure. I mean, I felt like very, I, when I came to New York at 20, I was like, I know everything and I'm totally together. And then you, you look back down and you're like, oh my God, I was such a baby and I knew nothing. And I think that's the beauty of, of aging and time yeah. is that Hopefully, and again, it really comes down to though, are you willing to do the work on yourself? And then, and then the experience and knowing yourself, that all comes along with that. Knowing yourself is hard. I feel like I thought I knew myself so well until I, I hit like 26. And 26 to 28, which is where I am now, have been such a unique uh, lesson in nothing, you know? <laughs> Just like the complete unraveling of identity. Mm -hmm. But I think women, I think if you, when you get to 30, I have seen a pattern with a lot of my women friends. It's like 30 is like, okay, you come into your own right. and you're, I think, less willing to try to, you're less willing to just be a pleaser or to make someone else happy. You kind of, you kind of know yourself and, and know your faults as well. Like, so something to look forward to. Yeah. My thirties. Yeah. Some of my closest female friends are in their fifties. Yeah. And you can be one of them if you want. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> That's it. It's done. <laughs>